little bit of Chuck Berry. I guess he was um, not the, the the best husband in the world, but um, we all have our faults, right? Pretty influential in the music in music history, that's for sure. So, I'm going to be talking about Erasmus tonight. I wrote an article on my WordPress, and um, the article's title is Error of the Baptist. It's essentially trying to research the history of the King James Version of, of the Bible. Because I saw a lot of extreme inconsistencies, which fall as the root and the the confirmation of the Protestant movement. And they say, I mean, it just seems really hypocritical that I find all these words being different from the King James Version and the interlinearary. I mean, the, the essence, the Protestant, what I understand of the Protestants is that um, as soon as you're saved, you're saved. Boom. John 3.16. As soon as you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are saved. Which is somewhat, somewhat different than what the Greek text tells us. The Greek text of the New Testament shows um, just a different, a different view that it's a process. Not that as soon as you do it, you're saved. That's it. You walk away. You're done. No need for the sacrament confession the body really the whole of the church and I understand Luther's complaint um, when you have centralized government of any sort whether it be um, centralization of education centralization of um, uh, religious doctrine it can be manipulated. The, the antithesis or the extremity, if you use your, your logical presence, if you used your logic to, to extrapolate to its further its furthest extremities. The opposite of that shows that we would just have a watered down version of the truth, right? You can either manipulate the root, or you can have a, um, a very watered-down version of of the of the text. And what I'm going to show is through through my research is that it was extremely, it has been extremely watered down. Um, I am I'm not trying to be a Catholic apologetic or even an Orthodox apologetic, but I do tend to sit, tend to agree with their side. Not with everything. You know, I don't go to a Catholic church every weekend. I go to a Baptist church every weekend. That's what's close to me. But I believe in the body. I don't go to confirmation. Uh, or I don't go to confession every week I confess my sins here in my uh, in my closet as it were <laughs> you know earnestly I must add but I don't go to church to sing songs and raise my hands up and say hallelujah and listen to a guy bang on his podium 
And the person I'm in, I'm referencing is this this gentleman who seems to be a very intelligent man, Pastor Stephen Anderson. I don't want to give this guy too many credits. It's not like I have a, a huge following right now, but um, if I ever were, I would hate to give this guy too much credence because uh, a lot of what he well. The root at what he is defending is is false. It's not true. Yes. Things that he says in defending the Protestant faith is not truth. And it's because they are philosophically flawed. Not only are they philosophically flawed, but I can show through history that their, their text is flawed. So, with that, what leads us into how was the King James Version formed? The story goes that James the First or um, James the Sixth, um, he had requested that I've heard anywhere from 12 to 54 okay I've read anywhere from 12 to 54 scholars um, attend I mean everybody knows this right all these scholars who were highly educated Jewish some of them were Jewish so they were in complete they didn't adhere to Protestant faith they really didn't adhere to the traditional Catholic or Orthodoxy right because this is this is after Orthodox Christians have departed from the Catholic Church this is the separation between this is after the Papal or the Great Schism the two schisms that happened. So this is um, this is after the Middle Ages. This is the late. I mean, we're we're, we're venturing into the Renaissance at this time. Fifteen sixteen, I believe, is when Erasmus took the Latin Bible at that time and started translating it into Old English. James the first was born in 1567. So you're talking about 50 years after the uh, Receptus Textus had been formed. Now a little insight on the Receptus Textus. Okay. The Receptus Textus was a third was the third revision of the Latin Bible that Erasmus had submitted to the print to print in an old English. He had left out some things um, in the first, I believe, in the second. He had. Um, He had mistranslated some words, so was, in the third one, he had compiled it into a text that was confirmed by Luther, Martin Luther, and William Tyndale. <clears throat> what later happened is, is in 15, let me see if I can gather this info for you. In oh, let's say fifteen something. Oh my gosh, I want to say late fifteen hundreds. Um, basically, James the first was trying to unite the what we know as Britannia, which is Scotland, England, and Ireland. Wales had already 
pretty much had already been um, formed into the um, into Britannia and um, the Church of Scotland had become Calvinist at this time the Church of England was um, uh, evangelical which th that history leads back to goes back to Henry the eighth James's great great grandfather now James was not a Tudor he was not of the house of Tudor he was a, the, of the house of Stuart so after Elizabeth the first died he was the next heir and he became um, he became the king now this is also his his request of the clergy to create to bring about a Bible was after the gunpowder plot of 1606 is that correct? I might be wrong mm, yeah May 1606 the publish wait, 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 wait. sanctioned harsh measures to control non-conforming English cla oh yeah, yeah 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 okay so the gun gunpowder plot I had to do a little refresher it was in 1606 gunpowder plot um was essentially a guy by the name of Guy Fall Fox F A W K E S and he went into parliament set up a bunch of gunpowder he was going to blow the place up he was essentially a terrorist what we would call today as a terrorist and the gunpowder plot was designed to get back at, at James for um for for James and the Parliament in requiring the Catholics to have an oath of allegiance to or conform with James's uh, measures, I mean, he was trying to unite everybody. You know? So in order to do that, he had to get rid of the Catholics or at least get them on board. And in order to do that, he sent an oath of allegiance to the Parliament or requested that of the Parliament, and um, you you could essentially be a Catholic. Do your rituals and be be your Catholic, but you had to not you you couldn't have your allegiance with the Pope. You had to do it to, to James. That was a, that's an important distinction. It's it's very important when we talk about the distinction between Catholicism and Orthodoxy. So it's similar. Orthodoxy and Protestant in their political views, the separation of the papal state. However, one is of a theocracy and the other is of a monarchy. So there's two different things. Theocracy rules, where the many church states come together and convene and blah blah blah, or the monarchy you are destined within a bloodline. And we can see how this works out in um, James's um, James's favor in the next segment. I'll uh, we'll, we'll continue on here real soon. Thank you.